Hey guys and welcome back. Congratulations if you have made it to this point. Your octophant should be looking pretty good now and in this video we are going to add in the last major element which is the water. We will then do our main blending which consists mostly of creating the lighting, shadows and colour. For the water then let's drag and drop our stock water photo from Unsplash and put it into a new group called back water. Let's scale and rotate it into approximately the position we can see here with the top of the water roughly at the horizontal guideline. Let's hide our elephant group for now, zoom in and grab our pen tool and create a path matching the foreground detailed curve of the water. It's up to you how precise you are here. If you can get in some of the bubble shapes and bubble detail, this will look cool later on, but don't worry about being overly accurate. Complete the path back where you started. Make a selection from the path and click the add layer mask button on the water layer to make a mask from the selection. We didn't do the initial camera raw on this water image as we did with the other elements, just because we are mostly going to be fading large areas of the water out and mostly want to keep the details of the bubble areas in, so it's not really necessary here. Let's reveal the elephant group so we can check the composition. This looks okay, so let's go ahead and fade off the bottom edge of our water layer using a black to white gradient on the mask. This reveals our solid grey-blue base colour underneath, so let's add in another colour adjustment layer and set it to a nice inky blue for the darker water and drag this into our backwater group. Put this and our water layer into their own group. We only want the inky blue to show beneath the water line, so let's command click on the water mask to make a selection matching the water and then with the newly created group selected, click the add layer mask button to duplicate this mask onto the group's mask. Let's go ahead and paint with a solid white brush the black areas where we faded it off earlier so it reveals the solid inky blue parts within the group. Next, let's add a nice circular gradient highlight around the top middle parts of the tentacles so these really pop out. Create a new layer in the group with its blending mode set to soft light. Using a soft white brush with a very low flow, gradually build up a nice circular shape. I decided I could do a better job than the first attempt so I deleted the layer and tried again this time with the flow set just 2% to give me more control over the build-up. I want to brighten the whole water area and make some colour adjustments, so first let's go ahead and add a curves adjustment layer and clip it to our group. Drag in the top right handle to clip off the farthest whitemost point, which effectively blows out the highlights slightly, and pull up the centre of the curve to bring up the overall brightness. Next, select the curves and the group and create a new group containing those items. Then add a hue saturation adjustment layer and clip this to the new group. Select the blues from the drop down menu first and reduce the saturation, then do the same for the cyans. Duplicate the whole backwater group, convert it to a smart object and drag it above the elephant group. This will become our front water. Set the blend mode to screen, then double click the layer to bring up the layer style panel and this time command click and drag the blend if grey this layer dark tones handle almost all the way to the right to keep mostly just the lighter pixels, basically the bubble detail and the lighter parts of the water. I think I want to boost the glow in the water a bit to make the tentacles pop even further. Let's name our glow layer and duplicate it to create a copy above it. Optionally reduce the opacity or leave it if you like how it looks. Now it's time to add our lighting effects. First, let's go ahead and add an exposure adjustment layer and clip it to our elephant group. Set the exposure value to around negative two and double click the exposure adjustment layer to bring up its layer styles window. We want to bring back in the highlights of the underlying layer, which is the octophant. So go ahead and command click and drag the blend if gray underlying layer highlight drag button to around two thirds of the way to the left or whatever you think looks good. Click OK. Now we want to mask out areas of the exposure layer adjustment wherever light rays coming from the main light source, which is basically the gap in the clouds to the left, will touch. Using a soft solid black brush, paint onto the mask where you feel these areas are. I'm starting off with the prominent tentacle breaching the water to the left of the trunk. Keep going around the whole octophant, painting out the dark exposure on areas which you want to keep light. Don't worry too much here about trying to be true to life too much. Use your artistic license instead and paint away what you think looks good. Generally around the edges and on prominent bits with lots of detail which you'd like to stand out will look cool. Let's now add some manual highlights to pick out certain areas even further. Go ahead and add a solid colour adjustment layer and clip it to the exposure layer beneath. Double click the swatch and select a nice light part of the main light source. It will be pretty much white. Add a solid black mask to this adjustment layer to initially hide it and set its blend mode to overlay. 
we can now go around roughly the same areas which we brought back in on the exposure mask and this time with a soft white brush set with a low flow pick out smaller areas which you want a stronger highlight on. Again, there's no exact science here, just go with what you think looks good. It's now time to make our tentacles look more underwater, so we need to give them a nice strong tint. Add another curves adjustment layer and clip it to the highlights. You will have noticed I have been trying to name at least some of these layers as I've, as I've added them. It's good practice to do so to keep things organised. We only want this tint to affect everything below the waterline, so scroll down to our back water group and command click the inner group whose mask has the solid white parts under the water curve to make the selection we need. Scroll back up to our water tint curve adjustment and apply this selection as a layer mask. We can now go ahead and select the red channel and bring down the top right handle which will reduce the reds and therefore boost the cyans. Please check YouTube for more in-depth curves tutorials on this which will explain why this is so but essentially cyan is the opposite of red in the curves tool. Optionally you can also select the blue channel and drag the top right handle to the left slightly to boost the blues also. I am then just slightly adjusting the opacity on some of the further back tentacles to knock them back further to help with the illusion of depth. We want to colour match the octophant head so its colour is closer to the overall lighting for the sky. There are loads of ways of doing this, but because we neutralised the overall tone in Camera Raw much earlier, I only need something subtle, so I will add a gradient map adjustment layer. Set an inverted version of the water tint mask as its layer mask. To do this, command click the water tint mask and then option click the add layer mask button on the gradient map adjustment layer to add an inversion of this mask. Double click the gradient map to bring up the gradient editor and double click the leftmost dark colour swatch and pick out a darker area of the sky. Do the same with the lighter colour swatch and select a bright area of the sky. Click OK and finally reduce the opacity to a nice low value around 15 to 20%. Finally onto our last step, we want to boost the brightness of the front water a bit. So let's add a pure white colour adjustment layer over the front water layer and set the blend mode to overlay. This is clearly too much so let's bring down the opacity to around 20%. This completes this portion of the tutorial and our artwork is looking another step closer to completion. If you are enjoying this tutorial, please click the like and subscribe buttons and hit the notification bell as this is the best way to support this channel and help it grow so I can produce more videos like this. See you in the next video where we will add some haze effects and global lighting.